You know those musical ideas, like a melody or a harmony or an entire tune, that just get in your head and stick there and you can't get them out of your head? They're called ear worms and something that musicians and producers want to create in our music. Well, today I'm going to introduce you to their distant cousin, which is something that musicians and producers want to ignore or remove from their music. Because today, 28 days until my album deadline, I was wrestling with one of these and I call them blah worms. So it's a very similar thing to an earworm in that it's something that gets lodged in your head, but instead of it being a musical idea, like a melody, it's something that somebody said. Now this somebody is not always, but usually someone who you respect or somebody who you value their judgment or their opinion. But again, not always. Sometimes, particularly if you're less experienced, it can be something that someone on YouTube said, a YouTube comment or a Facebook comment or an Instagram comment or, or something that you've read somewhere or something that you've read in a book or something that you've seen in a film. It's something that someone said that you take and apply it to what you're doing. Then you start to obsess about it. You start to think it all the time. It starts to wheedle its way into your brain, uh, which is why I call it a blah worm. So this, this person has said something. Sometimes it is about your music. So it's, it could come from a piece of feedback that you've got, or it could be something that somebody was talking about their own thing or about something completely different, but you then apply it to what you're doing and you start to obsess about it. So I'll give you the example that I was wrestling with yesterday. Now, recently I ran a workshop called the Turbo Lyric Attack. And in that wor workshop, I shared my process of writing lyrics because I've just started writing lyrics in my last album. And obviously I'm writing lyrics again now uh, for this album. And the way I start writing lyrics is simply by singing something, just improvising something. And one of the exercises in the Turbo Lyric Attack was where I just got people to choose a random object and they just start singing about that. So you'll notice if you check my music machine, which you can uh, just click the link in the description or the show notes for that, and if you go to my music machine, you'll see there's a track in there, or at least there is at this point, I'm probably going to rename it if I release it. Uh, there's a track in there called Trackpad. And that is me singing about this trackpad. Okay. Uh, and that's how it actually started. Now, someone who I really respect and I value their judgment, who is also a singer and was talking about her own music, said, you know, when you, when you said to do that, uh, I, you know, I, I, I had a resistance to it because I thought, you know, I'd just end up sounding like I'm writing a, a song from a musical. Now that comment, even though she was talking about her own music and also she, she followed it by saying, and when I actually started to sing, I realized that was, you know, a load of nonsense. I didn't need to worry about that. Even though that she said that, and she was referring to her own music, and she invalidated the thing. It, it has become this blah worm that has just wheedled its way into my mind, and I find myself obsessing about it. Does this sound like musical? Is this something that sounds like a musical? And one of the reasons that it's something that I'm bringing up is that in coaching so many people over the years, I've noticed this. Like, if you've ever said, well, people didn't like X, X being a piece of music that you made. Ask yourself the question, which people, who exactly? Because when I've, I mean, I've been, to I've been told this by many, many people over the years, people didn't like this, or people didn't like that, or people didn't like this way of doing things. Okay. And I say, which people, who? And usually it's one person or it's one thing they've read. Usually, like 95% of the time, it's just one thing they've read. In other words, it was the blah worm. Uh, 
doing their evil thing. And it's it's simply one of those things, a repetitive thought can get lodged in your head, just like an earworm. And just because you're having a repetitive thought, and maybe, I mean, this is why it's so they're so insidious, these blah worms, is that actually there may well be something, a great the reason it gets lodged in there in the first place is that there may well be something that there is a grain of truth to, or that something that you are worried about, or something that kind of conflicts with a sort of identity that you've had, or an identity that you do have. So for example, in this case, when I was at school, I used to sing in a lot of musicals. I don't want to write music that sounds like it's in a musical. So this thing really had a kind of resonance for me. And then it became lodged in there. And yesterday, as I was rewriting some of the lyrics and re-performing some of the things, I found myself obsessing about this. Oh, does it sound like it's in a musical? The thing is though, if I actually look at who I am and my past and what is actually authentic to me, it could well be that using some of the structures and the ways of working, the ways that musicals actually work, could I could do something interesting with that. It could be something that actually becomes a unique thing. I mean, I'm not suggesting I'm going to go and start, start singing Frozen covers, but it could be a stylistic thing that I choose to take and run with and change. It could actually be something that's good. But simply because this person said something that resonated with something that I am actually underneath it all worried about, it became an obsession. So yesterday I noticed this and I didn't do anything about it at the time. I just carried on going. And what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to ask myself some questions about, okay, why do musicals sound like musicals? Why do non-musical songs, songs that aren't in musicals, sound like that they're not in musicals? And see if there's a way that I can use my history of singing in musicals and being in uh, musicals and liking some musicals, not all of them, um, and maybe there's a way that I can actually use it to bring something fresh to my music. And for you, if you have something, if somebody said something to you, I mean, sometimes this can be something that you've been obsessing about for years. Take a look at who said it and in what context they said it and whether they were talking about your music and whether it's something that is actually valid, was valid in the first place or is valid in general. Because I can promise you, simply because you have a thought many times does not make it more true. Just like simply because you have a melody stuck in your head does not make it a great melody. And don't worry, I'm not going to sing Baby Shark to you right now.